Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our second live stream. For those of you that didn't join us or are just joining us for the first time today, I just want to remind everybody that today is actually live. This is not pre-recorded, not pre-edited. I've got a great team uh, helping me to put this all together, and we're going to be sharing a look inside. This series is really all about sharing with our shareholders and my commitment to be more communicating with you all. So this is really about how we take you inside and show you what my day looks like for the most part. So this week I'm in Detroit visiting with Brian and the team and we were out at a military trade show yesterday showing off our Humvee, letting customers take a look and take a drive and being able to just really experience our demo vehicle. So if you're joining us for XRO for the first time, what we want you to remember is that we are power electronics experts. Hopefully you've all seen our great news yesterday with our partnership with Sea Electric and how we've been able to take yet another partnership through to the next stage. Before we kind of keep going with that, I wanted to acknowledge, as I'm sure a lot of you are feeling like things are moving a little bit slower than you'd like. And as you think about that, I want you to think about any great product that you've seen come to market, first to market, not like everything else that's already in the market. That doesn't happen without bumps and bruises. That doesn't happen in, in a linear line. So I continue to say we can't make apologies for the delays that we've experienced. What we will tell you is that may, we maintain our commitment to grow our revenue next year through the multi-year partnerships that we've been able to contract this year with Vicinity, EVTS, and now Sea Electric. We have multiple other customers that we're currently working with, and we're very optimistic that those could come through in days, hours, weeks, as we work to close in on our next contracts. What we're doing is filling our fa facility, but more importantly, we're building multi-year business for everybody to feel good in our long term. And that happens now. That's because the product and our demos are able to show our customers that we're truly transforming electrification. We're making people think about how you do more with less. Everybody is focused on how we bring new vehicles to the market, but it's what's inside those vehicles that's really going to make electrification take. And so our electric vehicle systems division was a really important strategy for XRO as we wanted to create that ec ecosystem. We already have the control of how we control a vehicle or an energy storage or other applications. We can repurpose batteries and have the full circular economy. But how do we get in right from the start? How do we look at that design stage, that system integration stage, that software side? And so I met Brian quite a while ago, but through XRO, and we really got to know each other as Brian was the brain behind the conversion of our Humvee. And after we worked on that project together, I think we both knew that it was meant to be that we worked more closely. And so today I'm going to introduce you to Brian and let him show you around his facility and his team here in Detroit. Hey, Sue, thanks. Yeah, it's not uh, just my facility, it's really yours too. We're really one big family, but it's really worked out really nice to join full time. Yeah, so the idea today is we just kind of walk around the office, similar to uh, what we do with other stakeholders or potential clients. We always kind of start right here in the beginning in the front and uh, we look around the office. I tell people we have room for about 35 engineers in this kind of open office working space. Uh, it is just that. It's pretty open. We put a lot of work into actually revising and revamping the kind of the look and feel of the facility. Uh, we new carpet, new paint, new LED lights, that kind of thing. So we feel like we've created a space that's comfortable to work in. As we walk around, we actually see one of the first vehicles. This is one of our internal demo demonstration projects. We've taken a baseline stock vehicle. Obviously, it's a motorcycle in this case, but the X row inverter on it. And we've done some testing recently to show that really it does improve performance, efficiency, all, all kinds of good things. We have some more work to do on this particular vehicle yet, but I had a chance to ride it at the test track a couple of days ago, and it's pretty awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the test track that you went out to so that everybody can kind of hear what we did out there? Yeah, we went to a partner a group of ours uh, out just west of us about an hour, and they have a test track with a straightaway and some flat uh, surface areas where it can be a closed course. Obviously, when we're doing testing on prototype vehicles, we want to kind of have an area where not on public streets, that kind of thing. And then they also, in the back part of the facility, I have a big off-road park, really. So there's some gravel and some logging trails and some water and rocks and things like that. And we had a chance to take the Humvee along as well. So we had a lot of fun doing some things with the Humvee in the morning. And then just in the early afternoon, we did some riding on the bike. So it worked out really nice. 
Awesome. And for those of you that haven't seen the videos, you can get them online on our social sites and kind of get a little taste of what Brian and his team was doing out at the tracks with our vehicles. Uh, just as we kind of walk around the, the building here, take the lap to the back, this is another area we've kind of purposely carved out by the windows in the front. It's a little more natural light. And our team is growing now. We're over 20 people, so we kind of line up along the table here and have a stand-up meeting, generally once a week, but sometimes more when needed. We have the TV, you know, where we can display PowerPoints or things like that. We do a lot of scratching on the whiteboard, as you'll see as we walk by. But we're just kind of talking about the goals for the week, what the projects are, and in particular, if anybody has any issues or blockers or things like that, or they can't get their job done, we want to hear about it. So we kind of just wrangle as a team. You know, oh, I'm not, I don't, I don't know where this is. Does anybody know? And somebody else will kind of pipe up and chime in. And so it's a way we kind of stand up and get those things done quickly. So as, you, as we think about kind of that day in the life and how we're looking behind the scenes and how we're going to be taking you, this is our first one here in Detroit. We're going to take you through Arizona. We're going to take you through our kind of so what of extra. And we're going to be doing a lot of these live streams so you can really get a feel for why we are all so excited. So as you think about what the team is doing here, this is really about how somebody comes up with that initial idea. How do we look at anything that really wants to be created in the e-mobility space and kind of go, how do we design that? How do we work on that? And we have a lot of projects already ongoing here. Um, so we're going to kind of go through the rest. Yep. And on the way back to the shop where some of the more physical examples are, I'll just kind of point out some of the rooms we have in our facility. This is our main conference room. Obviously, we do a lot of client meetings in there, but anytime we have a large kind of like maybe a failure mode analysis meeting or something like that where we want multiple engineers to collaborate, we kind of get together in the large conference room. And again, as, you, as we're going, we're not like scanning all over. It's just, it's really hard because we're doing it live. So we're kind of showing you what we can show you, what we want you to see and letting you kind of walk how a customer would walk and come and see and visit with Brian. The next room along the progression here is actually what we're now calling the confidential projects room. So we had a couple of opportunities arise where we actually wanted to sort of segregate some parts of the team so we're not mixing one project with another. Sometimes clients, of course, want to be very anonymous. So that's the way we can do that. We sealed off the room on the ends and we have a key card access here only for certain personnel. So this is sort of the confidential product room, project room, sorry. That's where the really good stuff happens. Yeah, right, <laughs> we could tell you, but then we'd have to kill you. Uh, the next room actually we call it a low voltage testing room. So this room, uh, if you peek inside, has a new tile floor that's grounded and everything. So we have ESD production. And then we have testing going on in here that's primarily about software in a vehicle control unit or a VCU. So we sometimes refer to it. Uh, the, VC, the software goes into the VCU and then we have a HIL simulator, a hardware in the loop simulator that can actually simulate the vehicle and the driver and the test track. And it gives real physical or electrical inputs and outputs to the BCU and then test the software like in the computer actually. So it's a pretty sophisticated way of doing software validation testing and it's all automated. So we can run these scripts actually overnight, 24 hours a day, seven days a week and uh, get a lot of stuff done. So again, as we think about that and we tie it to kind of electrification, and for those of you that have heard me talk before, you'll know I often try to kind of calibrate back to the, what's in an electric vehicle. So we've got kind of the battery is the boss, and we're, we're going to look at some battery stuff out there. We've got the, 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 the uh, inverters, which is our coil driver and our controllers, which are kind of the brain to the system and how the motor works. The motor is kind of the, the workhorse, the power, and how it turns the wheels. And then you've got the VCU. And the VCU is really that communication. And vehicles don't move without a VCU telling everything how it talks to each other. It's like a poorly functioning team then, right? They're not going to talk to each other and it's not going to be safe. And you don't want to get in a vehicle if you don't have a good VCU. Yeah, that's absolutely true. The VCU really is kind of the brains of the vehicle, usually coordinates all the torque production and all the safety features, things like that. Sometimes it can collaborate with other controllers on the vehicle, um, but it's absolutely what we focus on is that core supervisory software on the vehicle. So Brian, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because we didn't, we didn't pre-test pre this at all. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, in your experience, because you have a lot of experience we kind of didn't talk about in the beginning, you've been doing system integration and working with electrification and vehicles for a very long time. Yeah. And so when you looked at the coil driver and you thought about your expertise in system integration, what did the coil driver and what XRO is doing, kind of what made you want to be here? What's your why for XRO? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. The, the coil driver technology maybe isn't like, as a fundamental thing that new, but the way that you guys have combined that with some software that actually decides when to use it and when not to use it, and some of the nuances, it's actually 
a software uh, smart product. Uh, so it's not just the fact that there's like this um, extra power electronics in the inverter that you know can drive two different windings, but the software of like deciding when to make the change, for example, some of the nuances of what to do with current management and things when it does that change so that it doesn't create a lot of electrical noise. To me, it's like really a software product, even though it's not software. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd agree with you. Yeah. We, we, we like to, you know, when I first joined especially, we talked a lot about how what we really are is a technology company. Yeah. And so the technology through the software, the technology even in our own drives, you know, the embedded software that's in our own drives. And so as we think to the customers and for our shareholders, as you're thinking like that kind of so what, why do, why do the OEMs, why do the tier ones, why are our partners like Linamar and others under NDA working with us? I think it's really that we play into that total cost of ownership. And it's not in a way that's easy for all of us to understand because we're just looking to buy the vehicle and we're just looking to make revenue and we just want to build a business. But the reality is our customers are looking for a lot more than that. They want a proven solution that lets them see that they're going to save upfront costs through features like coil charging or the ability to reduce the gearboxes. They want things that are easy to integrate through the VCU and system integration. They want something that differentiates themselves from the hundreds of vehicles that are coming out now, and that can all be done through the system integration as well. So I think all of that kind of plays into how we deliver that total cost of ownership and how we play a part in a more sustainable future by driving electrification up and combustion engines down. For sure. Yep. Another part of system integration is wires. So this room actually is the electrical build and test room where we do a lot of harness builds. We do some investigation things in there, tearing things apart, figuring out why they broke, that kind of thing. That's the room where we do that. As we keep going, actually then kind of the story that I tell clients honestly is it goes from that virtual software test area to the HIL simulator where it's low power, but then this room actually is envisioned where the high voltage or high power testing happens. So now in this room, we're actually turning on high voltage. It's actually a little bit dangerous, right? So in this room, we again can have the key card access. We wanna make sure people that go in there are trained, they have the right personal protective gear, that kind of thing. And we wanna just kind of isolate it from the main work in the shop. Nobody's spilling coffee in it or anything <laughs> silly like that. So that's why the doors are closed. Uh, over here, if you had a chance on the camera to peek, we have a little kitchenette area. We have a lot of fun and laughter in there, and sometimes interesting arguments. Uh, and then we have a stock room on this side of the hallway. We actually want to we want to execute projects quickly for clients. That's actually usually one of the values that we provide. We can kind of be separate from their main organization and execute really quickly and rapidly outside of the boundaries of their walls. So having some parts on hand actually kind of pre-bought for projects really helps accelerate things. We just want a project where we actually have all the parts in the room already to kind of build the, build the system. So that really does help. All right, we just have our normal kind of whiteboard things where we strategize for the day, what's going on in the shop. We have a tool storage room here. We have air compressor and sort of dirty, noisy things here in this closet. And then actually the shop. So where a lot of the work happens. So the shop here for those of you that are going to be following the series and looking inside with us is really different from what you see from the facility that we showed at our last one. That's a manufacturing facility. It's a clean room, much, much different. When we start showing you our innovation centers and our test centers, you're going to see something totally different than we see today. This is a lot of different parts and pieces, a lot of parts of the system that are coming together and a lot of different disciplines and expertise that's going into the finished results. And there's a lot of great people helping Brian to get that across the finish line. For sure, it's absolutely a team effort. You can see some of the folks here working on a battery pack right now. This is for a client project. The pack is completely designed for a given application. You know, it just barely fits up into the vehicle that's back there. And, uh, you know, we're planning to go help that client actually do some testing. So it's not, it's not just something that's going to look nice. It's actually got to be functional too. They're going to put some miles on it. So that's a really nice project for us to be able to dive in deep to a battery pack and then also help with the integration of that pack and their drivetrain uh, into the vehicle. All right. So before we take a drive and we have a little bit of time, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about the demo vehicle. So yesterday we had this demo. So last week, let's start there. Last week we had this demo out on the test tracks. You can find the videos online. And what those videos are really showing you is the different terrains. A lot of people have been asking us about the specs and the comparisons and how we do that. And so from your perspective, because you are kind of how we integrated this, I want to remind everybody, this was a military Humvee, Humvee, fully camouflaged, not on road, not certified. 
We're going to get it in for emissions testing, if those of you that have followed me, because we have to prove that it's electric because it's not been done. But the point of this was power. It wasn't about showing that we could be the smoothest drive or the next Tesla. We can do that if we did a different design. This one was about showing that extreme amount of continuous torque and power that we can deliver through the exocoil driver. And then tying that into, like Brian said, the wiring and the harnessing and the VCU and how we deliver a truly exceptional demo. And for me, taking it out yesterday was the first time that I, Brian show, you know, has been able to show it off to a lot of customers over the last few months. Yesterday was the first time that I could be with the customers and hearing what they said in front of the vehicle where we're driving and we're seeing it and we're actually performing with it. And, you know, Brian and I took it out for a drive in the parking lots. I've driven it in Arizona, of course, but, you know, it was just a totally new feeling to see it in front of the customers and in front of students. And so tell us kind of a little bit about your experience with the Humvee. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really great project. What, what really, honestly, for us was really, really nice about it is when it's sometimes for an external client, you're under a different sort of timeline and pressure to sort of, you know, get it done by a certain date. This was a case where we actually could control the timeline a little bit more, even though we wanted to go to the CES show. We knew we had it, had it done by then. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was... Yeah, like I said, we weren't able to kind of re-engineer the whole vehicle. The idea was just to kind of put the extra inverter inside and show the world that it's real, that it can be put into a vehicle that's pretty harsh, kind of got to get some big power requirements along with it. The goal wasn't to make the most refined vehicle in the world. It wasn't to make it, you know, the lowest, lowest cost or the lowest sound, you know, anything like that. It was really just to show the power of the extra inverter and sort of an interesting vehicle platform. So that's what we did. We just found this real old, you found the real old vehicle, <laughs> handed it to us, and uh, you know we painted it, made it look nice, but really it was the design of the whole entire electric powertrain. We dropped out the initial powertrain, of course, which was a uh, diesel engine and an automatic transmission, took all that away, all the fuel systems, all the uh, exhaust, all that kind of stuff, replaced it with this custom-designed electric powertrain. And then again, the software. Yeah, so custom wire harnesses, custom software to control everything some custom software actually to sort of interface with different parts of the vehicle. We have to monitor, for example, like the hydraulic pressure that's supplying the brakes, the power brakes and the power steering, things like that. So that's, that makes it safe. So it's actually a pretty interesting little project um, to touch a lot of parts of the vehicle, even though we didn't really change the wheels, the tires, the hood or anything like that. Like all of the guts inside really are new. So. Are new. Yeah. And so as we think about what that means for XRO and what that means for you as our shareholders, I think about how we've always talked about the scalability of the product. So this is a demonstrator in this size of vehicle. This demonstrates the power. The motorcycle out front demonstrates our speed and our power in a two-wheel application. It's the low end of the drive as far as it's the smallest drive that we currently have. So we can kind of do that scale. We could scale this one. This exact drive could go into a class eight garbage truck and do the same type of performance that we see now. And so as you think about that scalability, you also want to think about kind of our design philosophy. And it's one of the reasons why we've been a little bit longer to the finish line is that our design philosophy has always been not just making a prototype, but making a design to manufacture drive. So we're kind of doing those two paths in parallel. So if you look up a, a lot of startups, what happens is we build products and then those products are fantastic. You, you have a, a race car that can win the fastest mileage in the world or the fastest track in the world, but you can't actually get to production because when you get into production, it's 10 times the cost and you're not actually going to do it. The end goal here is to help bridge the gap to electrification. So if we're gonna do that, we wanna drive down the cost of an electric vehicle. We wanna make sure that we're helping manufacturers to look at that cost point. And to be able to do that, you wanna be able to eliminate or reduce out your two-speed gearing. You wanna be able to do things like the coil driving charging and help fleets to look at a different way of energy management. You wanna be able to look at the cost of balancing your cells. And so there's a whole list of options that's very customer specific. How the range is affected is very customer specific because it's vehicle oriented, it's battery size oriented. So those are questions that we're working with on our customer levels. And it's important to know that the vehicles that we're making are just demonstrators for what we can do. And so as we did this one, we also have our Linamar drive going out in the next month. We have our first pilots going out to see electric in vicinity before the end of this year. We have our pilot for EVTS already operating and our pilot for Potencia and our customer up in Europe. So there's a lot happening and there's a lot under NDA. I promised you just a month ago that we'd be pulling customers up and progressing. See electric was the first one. There's many more. That's not what I was referencing the last time. I've got my running shoes on for a reason today. 
Brian and I are going to go out for a coffee. We took it out last night. We're going to jump in. It's been a short day and look inside today as we shared with you how we start the journey from the customer and how we really start talking with the customer right from when they're looking at design and we build that loyal long-term partnership. As we go into our next live streams and our next look inside, you're going to be meeting Eric, our CTO. You're going to meet with different members of the team that show you how we test a drive, what's involved with testing a drive, how we walk through with a customer, how we walk through our so what, how we present. There'll be lots of topics that we're doing. If you have topics that you'd like us to cover, things you'd like to know about what we're doing in our day and how we're doing it and why we remain so excited as Extro, then I think just send an email to myself or to our IR team and we'd be happy to respond. If you have questions that you'd like us to look at, please let us know. Um, as a publicly traded company, these aren't about releasing new updates. We'll make sure that we indicate when they're updates. What I want you to know today is just some confirmations on a few questions before Brian kind of gives his last thoughts before we drive off. But I want you to know that um, from a NASDAQ perspective, there's been a lot of questions and, uh, and clarifications on where we are positioned right now for NASDAQ. As we have mentioned in our reporting, we do have our acceptance from NASDAQ. The timing of when we go to NASDAQ will be partly market driven. For right now today, I don't have that date for you. I'm focused on getting that production across the finish line, on getting us to that revenue. We've hit our first revenue. If you've looked at our financials, Yes, it's not big, but it's our first revenue and a large portion of it is coming from right here in Detroit from the EVS team. We're starting to see our customer projects progress just the way we all wanted. Our supply chain issues seem to be under control. They're not over. Everybody's still having them. There's a reason why companies are delaying, but we seem to be under control there. Nothing that's worrying me. We remain first to market and ahead by a long shot from anybody trying to do the same thing as us. So from a NASDAQ perspective, I think we're prepped and ready and as soon as we know our date we'll tell you and then um, from a litigation perspective still not much more to update you on it's not that I'm brushing it or doing anything it's that my focus is on winning and making sure that we do everything we can to protect what I can tell you is it is not affecting our day-to-day -day business at all our customers have NDAs our customers are able to talk to our legal team and our customers are able to get the reassurance they need to let us keep doing business as normal I know you all want to know timing. As soon as I have some timing, we're in a discovery phase. The lawyers are going through all those phases. As soon as I have that timing for you, I will let you know. But remember, we filed the IPR. We filed our defamation case. We're in a great position right now. So, you know, hold strong, hold tight, and we'll be updating you soon. And then from there, we're going to jump inside. And it is past lunchtime here, so we're going to go have a bite. We appreciate very much you joining us. Absolutely, yeah. I think my takeaway is excitement, really. Like you started, I'm excited to be a part of the team. I'm excited that we're growing our team here. And in fact, I'm feeling a lot of excitement from our clients. Like well, sometimes people come to us looking for the coil driver technology, sometimes not. But almost always when I tell them about it, when we expose them a little bit to what it's capable of, they're excited to learn more. So I just think that's kind of the theme for the day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you everybody so much. And I look forward to the next live stream in a few more weeks. Take care. I'm going to get coffee out of the deal. Yeah. Is that what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> Not food, though. No food? No food, just coffee. Just caffeine. <laughs> I'm glad you're driving because oh. I always feel... Uh, nervous about pulling out of the yeah it's a tight the, fit the garage it's so big are we in yeah beep beep here we come you gotta get i'll try not to bump into anything yeah i was gonna camera. say our doors in uh, arizona are a little bit bigger we do fit that is for That's sure all right so how crazy can i get you know right? the exit nothing too crazy i suppose no you can't you can't speed fast like we did yesterday yeah we uh we had some fun yesterday too, didn't we? Can you go up through the grass? Yeah, for <laughs> sure.